Hey everyone, Jonathan Beals here at Hinge Digital. Today I'm going to be walking through our latest project, Foodscape, done in NVIDIA's iRay. I will be talking about our workflow and how we use iRay on this project. So let's get started and take a look at the Foodscape video. This here is our look development scene that has a few extra objects in there for demonstration purposes that would not normally be in there. It contains a single desaturated HDRI that you can see here as well as a light card to provide some directional lighting and to add some form. You can see some of the light attributes here. If we go to viewport 2.0, we can see the textures that are applied to the objects. So let's get started with how I develop materials for this scene. This is what the scene looks like with all the materials applied. You can see here that I have three reference spheres to help me analyze and balance the lighting appropriately. We do this to ensure that the lighting is balanced so the materials will behave as expected under different lighting conditions. If we hit render, this is what it's going to look like. As you can see, I have applied a 50% gray material to all of the objects. So when I set up the lighting, I can make sure that my mid-grays remain my mid-grays. The material that I am using is very similar to the MIA material in Mental Ray. As you can see, it is laid out very similarly and has a lot of the same attributes. So if I wanted to turn this material into an apple material, I would have first assign the green apple texture to the diffuse. Okay, we now need to get some reflections on the apple. So let's turn this to 0.7. Okay, but it is too right. So let's turn on the Fresnel curve to give it an accurate reflection curve. The IOR is fine for this. Let's turn down the glossiness. And now it looks like a very dull apple. We can turn it back up to make it look shiny, and even add a texture to vary it up a bit. All right, after this, we need to add a bump map to vary up the material qualities even more. And this is what the bump map texture looks like, very simple. The next material we can change is the grape material. Currently it is an architectural material, but this is not what we want. We can click this and it gives us access to a bunch of different MDLs. If we wanted these to be chrome grapes, we would just need to click on the chrome material and immediately we have very reflective grapes. If we turn the diffuse color to zero, we can get a very black reflective material, but this is not what we want. We want this grape version 2 MDL instead. We click that and this is what we see. It's laid out differently than the architectural material. This is the beauty of MDLs. You can create any material you want and expose only the controls you want. This was incredibly beneficial to us and sped up our workflow and our render times dramatically because we didn't need to layer materials to get what we needed. Because of this framework, LPEs work amazingly well and there is no accrued render time when you have complex materials and need to render many passes. For this great material, we go through the same process. We first change the diffuse color to a green texture map and then we can change the velvet color and we can also change the diffuse color as well as the glossy transmission color. Let's increase the diffuse and the glossy roughness to make the transmission more matte. We can leave the diffuse level alone at 0.3 and change the diffuse transmission weight to 0.75 and the glossy transmission weight to 0.1 to give it less of a transparency. Now we can change the vein strength to 0.5. We can change the reflection weight to 0.4 and then the IOR to 1.5. 
There you have it, a great material hot off the press. Notice how through all of this, Ira has been updating very quickly and interactively. There was never a reason to have to wait and re-render to see what the material looks like. Along with this being interactive during material tuning, it is also interactive when you have to move the camera around. This helps seeing all the different angles so much easier and really helps to expedite the look development and lighting process. You can also move objects such as light cards around and interactively while you render. If you want to see what it looked like, if you had the light over here, you can do that very quickly and efficiently. You can also change the light's intensity to see how your materials would behave under different lighting conditions. Up in the right hand corner is where you can view your different LPEs that are available for this scene. Right now it's on a special one that omits any light emission. So if I turn that to an emission LPE, I can now see the HDR but I don't see the light card and that is because I have the visibility turned off in this IRA flag here. So if I turn that back on, I can move the camera around and we can see the light. If I show you all, now you can see the HDR and the light. I can turn this back off and this is what it would look like. Okay, and now let's let this resolve a little bit more and then I will take you through iRays Render Globals. Very simple and straightforward. This is a max path length that dictates the number of bounces of light paths that contribute to the final result. The higher the number, the more physically accurate your result will be. This down here is a Firefly filter. Here you have the min and max samples you want IRA to take, as well as a time cutoff for the render. So you can either base the final render off of samples or time taken. This section down here has different render algorithms that can help in different render situations. These are some other render options you can use to help fine tune your rendered output. This post effects tab gives you the option to enable light bloom or apply a degreen filter. The output tab is where all of your LPE abilities live. Here you can customize what LPEs you want to create. The primary for mine is a beauty that omits light emitting objects. We also have an emission LPE in case we want to see the HDRI or add in compositing. We have the diffuse glossy specular and we can include a depth LPE to create some depth of field in compositing if we wanted to have more control. So let's take a look at the main scene and see how everything came together. I began the same way as I did with the look development scene and applied a 50% gray material to everything and lit this scene with an HDRI. If we render it, it looks something like this. Now the cool part about this is notice I have about 1 million tries in the scene. About 860,000 are visible in our viewport and I'm still able to grab the HDRI and interactively move it around like this. Also keep in mind this is about a 7,000 pixel wide HDRI. This is a massive image that IRA is able to read quickly and update the scene with. For testing purposes, you would probably want to be using something smaller like a 3K HDRI. Now I can switch to the beauty layer and render and this will show you what it looks like raw coming out of iRay.
I can even take this piece of bread and move it up and the scene will still update fairly quickly even though there are over one million tries in this scene. Over here we can check out the different LPEs I have for the scene. We have the diffuse and the glossy and the specular LPE. These are all you need to combine to create your beauty from scratch if you wanted to go into compositing. And this is the all beauty layer that includes the HDRI as well. Over here if we move the light around, we can really see the translucency that we have in the leaves. That looks really nice. Okay, now on to compositing. Here are all the different render passes that were used in this scene. This one is the sky background. Here, then, here is an ID mat, a depth, normals, and then a projection texture of the scene. This is a projected texture for the cheese detail. Okay, so the first one is the raw diffuse LPE. And then the first thing that we did was color correct for some of the reds. And after that, I added a bit of flaky cheese detail with that projection texture onto the house. So if we zoom in here, you can see just a little bit of the little white blotchiness that was caused and created by that texture. Help give it a little bit more detail in life. And here I'm selectively saturating some of the reds, like in the strawberries. And then down here, I'm just adjusting the values in some of the raspberries. And this is where we are adding the glossy pass on top. And some more color correcting. And then over here, is where we are adjusting the tomato by mixing a bunch of different LPEs together. Give it some more variation and breakup. And so you can see here that this is uh, one of the glossy passes. And let's see, here we are uh, changing the colors of the seeds on the roof by using a bunch of different mats and to be able to give it more variation and more life to it. And so we were doing just a lot of color correcting through the, the different mats that we have. More color correcting. Uh, this is more of the color correcting for the cheese. And over here, we are adding some green beans and posts as a card in 3D Space and Nuke. And we're doing it in 3D Space and Nuke instead of just as a regular card so it will track properly. Here you can uh, see the mat, and then in here you can see what it looks like in the 3D scene. So very simple, very straightforward, but still pretty cool. And, and we did that for fun. We could have completely done that in, in the scene. Here we are adding the bread and the sky. Here we are adding the bread and the sky. 
And this is an atmosphere layer that was created using the depth pass and just color corrected. Atmosphere adds so much to a scene and it really helped our scene come alive. Let's see. Over here is a bunch of color correcting. This is the depth of field, and this is a place where we started to add the depth of field in post. And so if we click on this, we can see it update. Maybe. There we go. OK, now you can see that we've got a bit of depth of field. And the last thing that we did was added a foreground bread element that you can see here. And we can composite it all back together, and then that is what it looks like. And all this stuff over here is just the end tag stuff um, that has a bunch of the NVIDIA's logos and our logos. Um, and so what we need to do is just connect this up here, and we can see the final color grading. All right, so that's everything. I hope you guys enjoy this, and thanks for watching.